Accruals and Prepayments The aim of this video is to develop in more detail the process of an accrual and a prepayment, as requested from our previous video. By the end of this video you should be able to make adjustments for accruals and prepayments on a statement of comprehensive income, and I'll also work through an example of how this can be done. First, let's start by looking at what do we mean by the term statement of comprehensive income. Well, it's also being called the income statement and it's also being called a profit and loss account. And this is a document that's typically produced yearly to show the profit and loss that an organisation has made. Here is an example of an income statement. This is for B's business. And as you can see, you've got set out on your right hand side all of the information that's been produced at the end of the financial year for the 6th of April 2016. You should hopefully be able to work out how these figures are being calculated. Now B has actually realised that there's some mistakes have been made in that statement of comprehensive income. So rent is actually paid two months in advance at £1,000 each month. This is what we call a prepayment because the cost will actually be related to the next trading period but we can't include it on this set of accounts because even though we paid it in advance it's not linked to this trading period if you think about it the rent is paid two months in advance so for two months of that rent it has to be apportioned to the next trading period so that will be the next set of accounts on the 6th of April 2017 and you need to amend the information on that slide to reflect that you may want to pause the video now while you jot down your changes before I talk you through the example. So here, what you can see is we've done exactly that. We've lowered rent by £2,000 down to £10,000. And as a result of that, that affects the total expenses in the business and it also affects the net profit before tax. So it means that actually it increases by £2,000 because the rent has already been paid. However, that's the most important part we have to remember. We've paid this rent. B can't just lose £2,000. That £2,000 needs to go somewhere, needs to be reflected and shown. And what we have to do is, we have to use the other document, which is our Statement of Financial Position, or the balance sheet as it's sometimes called, and we have to record the £2,000 as what's called a current asset. And in simple terms, these are items we own that can be turned into cash within a year i.e. in this case we paid £2,000 and we're due that back within a year to so our time frame. So we have to then amend our current assets to reflect that. However, I will look at that in more detail in a future video. Now B has spotted that she made another mistake. This time, the supplier has actually given B a one month's credit. As a result, B has ordered £5,000 worth of stock on March the 30th and he needs to account for this. So as you can see in that example here, B has actually currently got purchases of £30,000. However, he's ordered £5,000 worth of stock on March the 30th and he's forgot to include it. Now, he isn't going to pay for that stock until the next trading period. So you need to think about how would you amend that statement. This is what's called an accrual. And that's because the cost is actually related to this accounting period, even though actually it won't be paid until the next accounting period. So even though it will be paid in the a period where the accounts will be the 6th of April 2016, it's actually got to be figured in and calculated for these this year on the 6th of April 2016. And you should be able to amend those accounts to show that. Here it is in the example, and look at the changes that have then been made. So if I increase my purchase to 35,000, that then means that when we work out my cost of sales, it'll be 40,000. Remember how I've done that? It'll be opening inventory plus my purchases take away my closing inventory that I've got left. And that means that my gross profit then will be 30,000, which then, of course, will affect my net profit. And notice it becomes a loss. But of course, you can't just magically lose that 5,000 pound because at the end of the day, that 5,000 pound is going to be paid. It, hasn't been paid yet, but it's got to be accounted for. It's got to be paid for. And because of that, and it's still got to be paid, we need to record that as a current liability in the statement of financial position. And just like a current asset, it's the opposite. These are debts that have to be paid within a year. And we know it's got to be paid. We have to pay £5,000 within a year. So as a result, we record it on our statement of financial position 
as a current liability. And again, I will cover that in more detail in a future video. When you think about it, it's really quite simple. You just got to think logically about this process. A business cannot complete all its transactions to fit in with the timing of the end of its accounts, which typically is yearly. It can't shut down every year and then restart once again. That's why we need to make these adjustments that we've been looking at today. And that's why these changes have to be reflected on the statement of financial position and the statement of comprehensive income. Of course, in this video, I've focused on the main changes that you'll be making to your statement of comprehensive income. You may want to watch some other videos I produced on the statement of financial position or the balance sheet, as it may be known, and then watch future videos that I produce where I explain how those changes will be reflected on that statement of financial position. Thanks for checking out the B Business B YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at B Business B. Also, give the Facebook page a like. It's facebook.com forward slash B Business B. And lastly, don't forget to check out the online hiver activities found on bbusinessb.co.uk full of quizzes, activities and resources. And remember, until next time, keep buzzing.